Either way, it's going to be a lot of missiles outbound. There we go. They're already getting ready to launch. There we go. Our first salvos off. Yeah, they're all, they're spent. <laughs> they're completely spent. Unfortunately, just like sit back and grab your ankles because it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's inbound. What's up, everyone? Good morning to y'all from the uh, beautiful Texas Panhandle this Monday morning. And I've got a good one for you today because we've got a bit of a showdown for you due to a viewer request. Someone asked if we could uh, showcase the United States HIMARS or High Mobility Artillery Rocket System with a TACOMS Army Tactical Missile System versus the uh, S-400 Missile Defense System of the Soviet Union better known as the SA-21 Growler. So this should be really interesting. The way we've got this scenario set up, we're in the Middle East. I've got one battalion of HIMARS located just outside of Incirlik Air Base in Turkey, not too terribly far away, sitting here in the countryside. Uh, if I understand correctly, one battalion would be three batteries of six. So we're talking about 18 launchers plus uh, a few support trucks or ammo trucks to go along with them. And then our S-400 site is going to be all the way down here in Syria on the coast. Uh, off of, uh, I guess it's to the southeast of, uh, I don't know how you pronounce this, Latakia, I guess. I don't know, but it's going to be a Basil al-Assad Air Base. And uh, this is based on a real-life S-400 site that is currently there from the uh, Soviet Union. And from what I can tell on Google Earth, they have four tails there or a transporter, erector, launchers. These are what actually house the missiles. So you're looking at potentially, let's see, each tail has four launchers. So you're looking at potentially four to 16. I did give them a little bit of a boost and I gave them uh, three tails that have the shorter range missiles too. So uh, the, I think that's the tail B that has three long range and then four short range. So yeah, it's a lot of missiles, right? There's going to be a lot of missiles. Uh, and if that isn't enough, I gave them two Panseers as well, too, or uh, SA-22 Greyhounds. And uh, those are the Shorad system that are just, like, hyper-freaking-deadly. Like, the Panseer just blows your mind uh, how deadly those things are. So we're going to see what happens. We're going to sling these attackums down here and uh, see what we can do. I've got them targeting, uh, if you see our launch site here, we've got our four tails. This is kind of in the area where they got them in real life. Uh, two generators. Uh, this is our tracking radar right here. This is our uh, Gravestone uh, truck mounted tracking radar. We've got a command and control behind that. And then this right here is going to be our Big Bird search radar. And then we've got a few, uh, a few fuel and ammo trucks. We've got one Panseer down here to the south. And we've got another one over here to the northeast to uh, cover this side. So yeah, missiles against missiles. And this is just mind boggling. Like anti-missile missiles blow my mind. The technology behind that. It's like me and a friend going out in the backyard and trying to shoot each other's bullet with another bullet. Like I it just, I, I can't even imagine that. So I have an idea of how this is going to go down, but we're going to watch it and uh, see how it plays out and then adjust accordingly. But uh, yeah, as you can see, the S-400 here in Basel al-Assad has a huge coverage area. Uh, this area right here, like all the way from Cyprus, way into Syria, down to almost the entirety of Lebanon and all the way up well past Incirlik. So basically aircraft, U.S. aircraft taking off out of Incirlik could be targeted uh, as soon as they take off. Now, there's line of sight issues and stuff like that from mountains and everything. So uh, you have to kind of take it with a grain of salt, as I always say. But um, either way, a huge coverage area. And then the attackums for the HIMARS, we're looking at. Yeah, you can see this red line right here. So uh, about midway through um, uh, Lebanon, I would guess. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> it's it's got a huge range, right? It's well, Basil al-Assad is well within range of uh, high mars at uh Incirlik. so uh, let's go ahead and we'll jump in this scenario this is a scenario i've set up myself and uh we'll see how this plays out all right here we go this is our high mars battery just outside of Incirlik. let's turn this guy down just a little bit here he's a little bit loud as you can see uh, a battalion of three batteries like that's no joke right that's a lot of equipment and this like this doesn't even hold a candle to the amount of support equipment they would have too. like this is just the bare minimum 
of stuff we need to kind of make this work. But yeah, you could see like uh, 18 high Mars launchers. That's a lot. That is a lot. They cover a, uh, a nice little area here in this field. All right, you see they're already getting it. Oh, there we go. They're off. These things blow my mind because they're like a bullet coming out. Like, you know, most rockets kind of ramp up a little bit, right? But these things, like, how do they come out so fast? They're literally like a bullet just coming out, just screaming out of the launcher. That is impressive, right? That is so impressive. All right, let's go. Uh, let's watch these guys. Here we go. You see, we're already up through 56,000 feet, almost 60 something thousand feet. Yeah, there we go, 61,000. All right, we need to go to the uh, S400 real fast. You can see our trail of missiles leaving is just a ton. I kind of wish they would shoot them. Oh, we've got S400 is already launching. He is already launching. Let's go check this out really fast. We're stationed at our uh, our big bird here. So there we go. There's our uh, missile. That was a short range missile. Uh, I don't know the terms for the missiles, so you just have to bear with me on that. But yeah, they're launching the short range, which, uh, range ones now. But uh, as you can see, here's our four tails. Nice, just one after another. They are letting them have it, right? One after another. All right, so you see the big launchers here. That's the big long range missiles. And then this little four pack here is the short range missiles. So they've got, yeah, they've got something like three. Three with the uh, short range missiles. And then here's our uh, Panseer over here. Okay, let's go. All right, we are back down through uh, 39,000 feet with the attackums. These things burn forever. That's another thing that really kind of blew my mind. He's uh, 2,000 knots. Look at him. They're just screaming in, right? Just absolutely screaming in. And uh, we're probably going to be greeted by the S-400 here shortly. So, yeah, we're just about to uh, go feet dry. I'm really, I'm kind of surprised they haven't been shot down. Oh, there we go. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. There you go. Yeah, they're being shot down. Missile against missile technology is so crazy. Who would have thought, right? Who would have absolutely thought? Yeah, those have been shot down as well, too. They're going to be shot down. Let's go back to the... Uh, Let's go back to the Big Bird because I want to watch. All right, the Panseer, he is in effect now. You see the radar, the targeting radar, the acquisition radar, whatever you want to call it. They know something's on the way. They know something's on the way, and uh, they're going to see about engaging it. I don't know if these things, if in game, if they tie in with the early warning with the Big Bird here. But either way, all right, there you go. And you see the white, the white speck on the uh, on the horizon in the sky there. That is the uh, attackums coming in. The Panseers are launching. They've got uh, 12 rockets each, 12 missiles each. Plus the gun, which is a lot like, I guess it's like a Soviet version of a CRAM. All right, they launched. I, I think they pretty much launched everything. You see the explosions in the distance there. We've got more attackums coming in. There's one that just blew. Oh, never mind. There's no one just taken down. Here's the. Uh, that was the uh, Panseer. And there's no other ordnance in the sky right now. I think everything was taken out. I think that was the case. Everything was taken out. Let's look. Let's look at our launchers here. So, yeah, this tail, he blew everything. Like, he, sh he launched everything he could. That one as well. This guy did too. And this one, long range, all the short range, like everything went. Let's look at the Panseers here. What do we got left on these guys? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of 12 on this guy. So they still had a good bit left, including the gun. The gun wasn't even used. And then this Panseer here, he's got, what does he have? One, two, three, four, five, seven as well on this one too. Okay, nice, yeah, so. Uh, a battery of high Mars against, I wouldn't even call this like a full unit, an S4 unit. I think like on average it's six launchers, upwards of 12. But the one here I know for a fact on Google Earth has four. So it's not even really a full complement. And you can see 
Uh, they downed all the attackums. No problem. They downed all the attackums. Um, so at this point, it's going to be about who can reload uh, faster. Who's going to reload faster? These uh, the S four hundred the launchers here, which I don't see that happening. I've seen some numbers for uh, uh, the reload on these guys. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it, it's lengthy. It, it's a process. I think the uh, high Mars are going to load and uh, get rounds off a lot quicker than the uh, the S four hundred site. And at that point, all you've got uh, against them are the Panseers. Now these can reload pretty fast. And I would say they would probably be completely... Yeah, there's already one reloaded. I'm going to say these are probably going to be a full complement by the time the uh, HIMARS get another salvo off. We'll see. We'll kind of hang out and wait for another launch. All right, here you go. You can see our HIMARS are already getting into launch position. That wasn't very long at all, guys. Like, Oh, and there they go. <laughs> and there they go. I want a view of the missile coming out of the launcher. Like, from the missile. Like, I think that would be so freaking awesome. They're not doing very good as far as, like, uh, overwhelming force. I, I wish they would just, like, hold and launch all at once. But uh, there you go. There's a few in the air. There's some more going. Yeah, so they're just doing it as a reload. As a reload, we've got more missiles inbound. More attackums. It's going to be Army Tactical Missile System. We are 60 through 62,000 feet, almost 63,000 feet, almost, not quite. So now it's the second salvo of attackums basically against the Panseer. That's it. We've got the Panseers and uh, nothing else. I guarantee you these uh, S-400 launchers, these tails are not going to be reloaded. Yes, they are not. They're not even remotely close to being reloaded. They don't even have the first missile. You better be reloading like no tomorrow. <laughs> like, I don't know. Let's look at the Panseer. Yeah, Panseer is almost completely topped off. Minus one round. And by the time they engage that one round, um, will probably be uh, loaded up. All right, let's look at the other guy here real, real fast. I got a little distracted there. Let's see. Almost completely reloaded as well, too. Yeah, so... Uh, now, we just gotta sit and wait on the uh, the Panseers to engage. I want to say their engagement range is like 15 to 17 miles. Something like that. You can see our tracking radar of the Gravestone is already locked on to the attackums that are inbound, but uh, they have no, uh, no missiles to launch. No, nothing. This is the bad boy that's targeted right here. If you take this this single unit out, this tracking radar, if you take him out, uh, the entire side is rendered ineffective. All right, here comes our attackums. You can see the white, the little white cloud. It looks so inconspicuous, right? It's just like a little white cloud. Oh yeah, this is going to be bad, guys. I don't even like. I don't even know if the Panseer is going to engage or not. It it doesn't. No, they're not. I wonder why. They're not even they're not even engaging. They're like, no. Oh, direct hit. Nice. We've got a lot of missiles inbound, guys. This is bad. The, yeah, the uh the Panseer didn't do anything. They just sat back and olayed it. Like they just let him <laughs> just let him he's laying waste. Now I only targeted the one point, the radar. I didn't want to go through 18 targets setting that up, so I just did the one, but you can see. It's doing more than enough damage. Like the entire S-400 site has been taken out. Minus the big bird. Oh man, they are really... There you go. Oh, boom. <laughs> nice, yeah. Uh, okay, round two. The second salvo, yeah. The second salvo did it, and we've got we've still got missiles coming in. Oh man, they're they're taking everything out. Like even the even the ammo trucks back here, <laughs> like nothing is safe. Oh, they are screaming in too. Man, they're screaming in. I couldn't even imagine what that would sound like. Them coming in like that. 
I bet I bet you hear him break the sound barrier. Let's hear this and fly over. He didn't. Interesting. I would have I would have swore I would have heard it break the sound barrier. Maybe they're going less than the sound barrier at this point. Maybe less than the speed of sound. It looks like we've got more coming in. Oh, that's scary. That's a scary sight, guys. These streaks coming in. Yeah, okay, he is. Yeah, you hear him breaking the sound barrier as they go in. That is that is crazy. That is so scary. There goes another one. Yeah, okay. So, uh, initial attack. The S-400 took it. Like, it, it stood up to it, no problem, right? Four tails against 18 HIMARS, no problem whatsoever. Uh, it's all about the reload. It's all about who can get loaded up on the second round. And there's so many other variables that go into this. Like, this is just HIMARS pitted against the S-400. There's other air defense systems in Syria, too. Some of the most heavily defended airspace in the world. So, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. You're not going to see a situation where it's just HIMARS attack them against an S-400. There's going to be so much other stuff coming into play. Uh, probably other air assets, you know, seed and air defense and everything. Like, it's way more complex than this. But uh, I want to see... The initial strike is basically about who can outlast, who can, uh, or who can overwhelm, or who can surprise. So the HIMARS outlasted the uh, S-400 because they were able to reload and get another round off before they were reloaded. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to go back in the editor, and I am going to add a second battalion. So a total of 36 HIMARS with attackums for an overwhelming strike. Let's see what that does. All right, here we are back in our mission. This time we've got two battalions of HIMARS launchers or a, a total of 36 launchers. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, there's only 360-something HIMARS in the in entire, like, U.S. inventory, if, if the information I saw was correct. So, I mean, yeah, how likely is it that you would see two battalions together? Eh, maybe, but uh, like I said, it's, it's going to be fun to see. Either way, it's going to be a lot of missiles outbound. Here we go. They're already getting ready to launch. There we go. Our first salvos off. This is going to be six batteries. Six batteries of HIMARS. Two battalions. Yeah, it's a lot of missiles. Man, it's like a bullet coming out of a rifle. It's crazy how fast these things go. That is insane. Look at that. That is crazy how many there are. That is impressive. That is impressive and scary. I keep saying that, but it really just is. Look at that. All right, let's go to our S-400 site. This is going to be a deal where it's just overwhelmed, and that's, I mean, that's taking out air defense systems in a nutshell. Is just overwhelming it. Like, you know, how do you overwhelm it? Well, you could do it with brute force with a bunch of rounds inbound, but uh, that's kind of a waste of money. I don't know how much an attack them costs, but I would imagine they're not cheap. So that's a huge waste of money for a whole bunch of them to get shot down. So in real life, they'd probably uh, they'd throw a bunch of towels at this thing, you know, decoys, all sorts of stuff like that, jamming to try to make it ineffective. It's so like I said in the first round, there's so many factors that go into this. It's, it's not just like a cut and dry um, answer, but uh, yeah, this it's pretty impressive nonetheless. It's just like overwhelming it, you know, brute force. These are really cool. Uh, once again, this is a mod. This is a mod. I think this is the same guys. These are the same guys that did the high digit Sam mod. Uh, the, the high Mars is by um, uh, Current Hill. Hill. They're both mods. I meant to add that in at the first of the video and I forgot. But yeah, that's everything. Everything is gone. Everything is outbound. Yeah, they're all, they're spent. <laughs> they're completely spent. And I just got to, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, just like sit back and grab your ankles because it's coming. <laughs> it's, it's inbound. 
We'll wait and see. The smoke is cleared. Yeah, this is a really cool mod. Very well done. Uh, the high digit S300s I like a little better because uh, if I can remember correctly, they kind of pop out of the launcher and then they ignite. It kind of like real life, right? Like they just don't launch out. At least as far as I as as far as I know, um, they kind of got like shot up in the air and then they take off. Uh, it's kind of a neat thing. Oh, there's the Panseers. The Panseers are trying. <laughs> They're trying. You can see the attack -ums in the distance there. There's a whole bunch of them. Look at all those white streaks inbound. Did you imagine just being out in your yard doing something and these things fly overhead? Oh, yeah, they're being shot down. Look at them. Yeah, look at that. You can see a shockwave. Boom. Yeah, they're getting them. I think these are the guys that are going to make it past... Oh, they're still shooting them down, right? Yeah, they are. They're still shooting them down. They're trying. Oh, there's a C-Ram or their version of the C-Ram. I don't know what you call that. It missiles, missiles on target. Of course, in real life, they would be taking out a much larger area. Like we're just pinpointing one little teeny tiny. Man, they even took the fence out over here. This whole area. Oh, they're shooting. Yeah, the, the gun. I've yet to see a gun take one out. But uh, yeah, two battalions against this Fortel site. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Like I said, what's the likelihood of seeing two battalions of high Mars in one area? You know, maybe a coordinated strike or something from multiple locations. But uh, yeah, I think two battalions right there together would be kind of rare. But either way, it's interesting to, uh, to think about. So yeah, two battalions of 36 launchers against uh this s400 site with four tails yeah it'll take it out easy no problem like they held up for a little bit but uh it's all about brute force right anytime you're taking down an air defense system it's about brute force that that that's the basic nutshell anyway i hope you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to hit that like subscribe ring that bell love all of you and uh we'll catch you out there in the skies next time peace no big cat no <laughs> It's the weirdest day ever.